casting a coin twice. Okay, casting a coin twice. We know uh, the probability that two heads will show up is equal to one quarter. But for continuous variable, because it is continuous, so it is different. For the discrete type, we use probability function. Probability function. Sometimes people say that's probability mass function. So in this case, when you say px is equal to 2, then you get a probability. But then for the continuous type, it is called probability density function. And from this function, what you get is not probability. It is the height of the function. So let us say the function is like this, OK? So what you get at this point, say x1, and this is fx1. It is not the probability of x1. It is the height of probability x1. So we say pxi for the properties of probability. It must be less than or equal to 2 greater than uh, sorry, less than or greater equal to uh, less than or equal to one, greater than or equal to zero, and summation p x i must be equal to one. But it is not a case for probability density function. The only requirement is that f x is greater than or equal to zero. But of course, let us say the x is between a and B. So in this case, integration of from A to B, fx dx must be equal to 1. Okay? So this is the requirement we have. And the height must be greater than or equal to 0. So this is quite different from here. So let us say this is 2. But this is a continuous random variable. So in the case of discrete random variable, px equal to 2 is equal to a probability. But in this case, fx is equal to 2, OK? It is equal to the height. But let us say we want to know the probability of x equal to 2, but this is a continuous random variable, how much should that be? It should be zero, because this is only a line. And a line has no area. If it has no area, then it has no probability. So let us say this is equal to x1, and this is equal to x2. Only between two numbers from this region can we find a probability. If it is only a number, then the probability should be zero. Because from probability density function, you won't get probability. You have to find them between areas. OK? So now, the same thing, let us try to review the formula for the uh, expectation and also variance for discrete random variables. So you know expectation of x is actually equal to summation x times px, right? OK, so this is what we have. What about variance? Variance is equal to summation. Now I will omit these two parts, x minus mu x squared times px, right? Do you remember how to simplify this? It can be simplified as summation xi, uh, let's uh, forget about, okay, let's put xi there, okay, put xi there. xi squared px minus mu x squared, okay? 
Look at your notes. Last week, we showed how to simplify from this formula to this formula. Okay, can anyone tell me what is this? As you know, expectation x is equal to summation xi times pxi. And what is this? This is summation xi squared times pxi. So if you look at these two, this is actually expectation x squared minus mu x squared. Okay? So what does that mean? Expectation x squared is also equal to mu, um, sorry, variance x plus mu x squared. So this is another formula you can use to calculate uh, variance, okay? Another, if you know this information, okay, then you should be, and also this information, then you should be able to get variance, okay? So this is for discrete, okay, for discrete random variables. Now let us get to the continuous one. Okay, the same thing, but the difference is now we have to use probability density function, not probability mass function. Okay, so expectation x will be equal to summation. Uh, no, this is, should be uh, uh, integration, okay, integration. Of course, this is equal to mu x, okay? But then, we use integration. Of course, let us say x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. So this is from a to b. And the same thing, we have to have x here, okay? We have x and times. For the discrete type, we time it by, we multiply it by, probability function, and this will be probability density function, and dx, okay? So this is just a formula, the same thing, okay, the same thing. Now, what about vx? vx will be, okay, sigma x squared, and it is equal to, from a to b, x minus mu x, square and time fx dx. So basically it's the same thing, okay? Basically it's the same thing. But of course, uh, you know, because it is a continuous type, we have to use integration instead of summation, okay? And of course you can simplify it the same way, okay? The same way there, okay? So it will be Summation from A to B, okay, x squared times fx dx minus mu x squared, okay? Any questions so far? Now let's get to a theorem, okay, we call Chebyshev inequality. Chebyshev inequality is a formula that gives us an estimate of how things are going. So what's the probability of the value falling into a certain region, okay? So let me give you the formula first. Okay, so this is the formula. So what does this say? Of course, uh, it is just easier for me to draw a picture like this, but we know 
for any kind of variable is not necessarily a normal distribution. But let us use this as example. So this is mu x, right? Oftentimes we are interested within certain region, so within certain interval, what's the probability that the value gonna fall into that? So this is mu x. And let us say this area is k, I mean this distance is k sigma x, and this distance is also k sigma x. So we want to know <clears throat> for any value, what's the probability that it will fall into this area, okay? And there's one way to estimate it. It is by Chebyshev inequality. So what does this tell us? This tells us that, so if k is equal to two, okay? If k, so this is two sigma x, and also this is two sigma x. So if we don't know the distribution of this function, of this random variable, then what is the probability that any value will fall into this region? And it is very simple. You just plug in the number, because in this case, how much is k? k is equal to 2, right? So that means x minus mu x, okay, is less than or equal to 2 times sigma x. So what is the probability that any value will fall into this region? It will be 1 minus 1 over 2 square, so that is 1 minus 1 quarter, so that's 3 quarters, so 75%, right? 75%. So this is one way to estimate, uh, you know, what's the chance that the value will fall into this region, okay? But of course, the best thing for us to have is to know exactly the probability distribution of that random variable. But sometimes if we don't, still we will be able to estimate a approximate probability that any value will fall into this region, okay? Any questions? Okay, now we get to Okay, now we will get to functions of random variable. Let us get to this example again. So cast a coin twice. And x is the number of heads. Okay? So in this case, we know the probability, right? The probability function x and fx, okay? x can be equal to two, one, zero. The probability one half, one, sorry, one quarter, one half, and one quarter, okay? So of course we know expectation of x is equal to one, right? And variance of x is equal to, can anyone still remember it? How much is the variance? I think it is one half. Okay, so in this case, what are we gonna do? Because sometimes, okay, we can find something that is related to x, okay? If we already know something is related to x, and also we know what x is, then it will be easier for us to deal with that from x instead of the new thing. So let us try to get this example. 
So let us say W is equal to A plus BX, okay? W is equal to A plus BX. Of course, this is a new variable, right? But we know it is related to X, okay? It's related to X. So in this case, the best to deal with it is to find out what's going on in terms of X. So in this case, of course, we would like to know expectation of W, right? And also variance of W. In this case, let us say expectation of X is equal to mu X, okay? And then expect uh, variance of X is equal to sigma X squared. So this is what we know. How can we infer from what we know to what we don't know? We want to know the expectation of W and also variance of W. How can we tell expectation of W and variance of W from here? Okay? The easy thing to do is, since we want to know expectation of W, right? So we plug in the number. What is W? W is equal to A plus BX, right? Okay. Expectation A plus BX. Any questions so far? Okay, and then we want to know, what is this? Actually, expectation of W is equal to W times PW, right? It should be this. Okay? But then, it is here, right? Okay, it is here. So, in this case, what can we say? We say, this is actually expectation of A plus BX times, sorry, it should be summation. Summation A plus B x and times fx, okay? Because the only variable here will be x, okay? The only variable will be w, and w is corresponding to x, okay? x there. So what can we get? Of course, it is the better we put px, okay? Okay, px. And we can say, we can uh, expand, expand it. So this will be equal to summation A times PX plus summation BX times PX. Okay? Okay, and this is a constant, right? A is a constant. It is not related to I, okay? It's not related to X because there, here it is from i, uh, e, i from 1 to n, right? And this is xi. So no matter the changes of i, right? No matter how it changes, is this affected? It is not affected by i from 1 to n because it is always the same. It is always a, right? It is always a. So in this case, we can get it out uh, let me use this part, okay, we can get it out. Okay, so it is equal to A times summation PX, right? And plus, the same thing, this is a constant, right? This is a constant, so plus B times summation X times PX. Can anyone tell me how much is here? How much is here? It should be equal to... Yeah, you know, how much should be this? Wu Jinxin. We just mentioned it. 
what's the probability of a probability function? Summation px must be equal to 1. Okay, you got it right. So this will be a, right? Times, okay. Can anyone tell me what is this? This is Zhang Yudi. What is this? What should be this part? Zhen Xiang Xiang. It should be expectation of x, right? Expectation of x. So plus b times mu x. Okay, so now you can learn something from here because this is the expectation we want to know. But this is the relationship between a and, I mean, w and x, right? So in this case, you can tell quite easily, okay, if uh, it is E, if W is equal to A plus BX, then as a matter of fact, this should be A plus B mu X, okay? Now we will get to a whole series of examples so that you know clearly if we have a random variable that is a function of another random variable then actually you don't need to calculate the whole thing because from what's going on here okay you can tell exactly the relationship between expectation w and expectation x okay so now let us get to uh, some of the example here, okay? Okay, so now let us say this is A, okay? And we want to know expectation. And then variance. Okay? Of course we can know, we can tell from variance to standard deviation, okay? Okay, if we have a whole series of number and it is A, a, they are n a, okay, they are n a. So, can anyone tell me what is the expectation? So, in this case, it is expectation of a, right? Okay, expectation of a. So, what is expectation of a? Expectation of a, okay, so in this case, you want to remember the formula. The formula or the definition will help you to deal with this case. So what is expectation x? Expectation x is equal to summation x times px, right? Okay? And what is expectation a? The same thing, because here you are talking about x, and here you are talking about a. So you should replace x by a, okay? expect summation a times px, right? The same thing, we say this is from, this is i is equal to 1 to a, right? But if x changes the number x1, x2, xn, if this number changes, will this number change? No, right? So we can factor this out, we can move this number here, a times summation px. Again, this should be equal to 1, all right? So expectation of A is equal to A, right? Okay. Okay, then talk about variance. How much is the variance? The variance, okay, Vx 
is equal to expectation x minus mu x squared, okay? And it is summation x minus mu x squared times px, okay? Also equal to summation x squared times px minus mu x squared, okay? I have already written these formulas a lot of times, okay? By now, you should be able to get familiar with all this, okay? These will be on the test, okay? Any more questions? So can anyone tell me what's the variance here? This is the data we are dealing with. We have n number of a, right? How much should be the variance here? Okay, so in this case, the same thing, okay? We want to know variance of A, right? In this case, we replace X with A, right? So here it should be A, right? And this mu X should be expectation of A, right? So this will be A, okay? And this will be also A, right? So in this case, is there any variance here? There's no variance, okay? And then let us say this is x1, okay, x2, xn. We already know that. This will be expectation x, and it is equal to mu x, right? And this will be variance of x is equal to sigma x squared. And this is variance of a is equal to zero, okay? Any questions so far? Okay, now let's get to, let us say the data we have is not x1, x2, xn. It is bx1, bx2, and bxn. So in this case, we are dealing with expectation of bx, right? We are dealing with expectation bx. So what is this? The same thing, right? So we are dealing with expectation Px, okay? So it will be equal to summation Bx times Px. Can anyone tell me what should it be? Because we can move this out, right? We can move this out so it will be B expectation x because this part when this part is moved out okay let me try this okay let me do it this way b times expect, uh, summation x times px right and what is this that is expectation of x so that's b times mu x